Guitar Practice Session 9 20, 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I first do the practice session and then recap what I have done so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being the recap, hoping the practice sessions help me to put together a routine, verbalize what I'm practicing, which gets it in my head a little bit better, possibly providing information for other people working on similar information, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to practice the things that I'm trying to get in my mind mind. So this time what we're going to be looking at is the minor scale or the uh, Aeolian mode, what I'm going to be calling mode number six, remembering that we're going to be using our Excel worksheet, of course, and my strategy might be a little bit different than some other worksheets you've been working with, which is to try to get everything lined up going the same way because Maybe I'm a little dyslexic over here. I like to see things going the same way, which means that I'm behind the guitar and I see the guitar with the top string, the one closest to the ceiling, the lower heavy string down left to right. I'm going to construct my worksheet in the same way as though I'm viewing it from behind the guitar, the low or heavy string on the top, the small string on the bottom or light string closest to the floor and then uh, left to right. And then when I put my guitar on the screen, I will actually flip it around for much of the presentation so it'll look like I'm left-handed. So you can kind of imagine it's your own hand behind the guitar and you're behind the guitar fretting it, everything basically going the same way. That's what I do that might maybe is a, a little bit uh, different and possibly more helpful for certain people at least. Uh, uh, so if uh, this is useful to you, I'll try to provide the worksheet and I do think that basically providing or trying to mirror or act like you're giving the information to someone else forces you to be better understand it and verbalize it. So if you want to take this worksheet, adjust it, make your own presentations, don't worry about plagiarizing or anything like that. Uh, you, could, you can use the worksheets uh, if you want to do something like that because I think that's just a good learning uh, tool and worth uh, doing. In any case, this time we're in the Aeolian mode, which is the main minor mode, remembering that I'm using these absolute numbering systems for the modes because I think that helps us do some simple math uh, with the modes and helps to orientate us. So therefore, using the major scale or Ionian mode as our key, naming it mode number one, means that the Ionian, the sixth of the major scale, will be mode number six. So I'm still going to be in the minor scale or Aeolian mode. I'm still going to be having the relative positions one through seven in relation to the minor scale. But when I look at the actual modes related to it, I'm going to be labeling them with the absolute mode number uh, related to the major scale, which allows us to do some simple math. So we cover some of that. We go over some different names for the naming conventions of the shapes that we are using. Remembering that when you cut the guitar and try to break it down into chunks, we break it down into five chunks oftentimes. You might call that like uh, the pentatonic breakdown or, or something like that. Uh, and that's one way that, you know, quite common to break up the guitar. We could also try to do a three note per string breakout, which I might do uh, a little bit later and try to try to see it that way. But even within these shapes, we also want to break it out into its smaller chunks oftentimes. Otherwise, in order to learn something down here, you might end up seeing that you can only find what you're doing down here by playing the entire shape from top to bottom. And so what you'd like to do is break the thing down into, at least I believe that's what I'm doing, break it down into smaller chunks that I can visualize so that I can try to start from different positions, which we can do with the seven note scales. And we could also try to do that with the pentatonic scale, noting that the pentatonic scale that we normally think about relates most heavily to the major and minor modes. So I'm on the minor mode, the other major mode being the major scale, mode number one, Ionian, and the five note pentatonic fits beautifully in those two modes in particular. So we'll then, I also go over the minor mode, trying to look at the shapes for a five note pentatonic scale, putting them over the top, the shapes that I'm looking at the seven note scale so that I can try to visualize those things together. So again, part of the problem here is of course, we're trying to deconstruct it to its components, but then all the components are related and you can look at it from an infinite number of perspectives. So I think 
from my perspective right now, the best thing to do is seems like you break you break the fretboard into different components, learn to see it that way, and then try to integrate those components together so that you can kind of move your mind around to seeing it as a seven note scale to a five note pentatonic scale to a three note uh, per string uh, kind of scale. And you can kind of build those different ways of seeing, seeing it together uh, and, and tr try to switch in your mind what's the main approach that I'm taking at this point. Am I seeing it as a three note per string? Am I seeing it as a particular mode? Am I seeing it as a pentatonic scale? And, and then how do those things kind of relate to each other? The more connections you get, I think that is the definition of understanding something, the more different ways you can see it and how you can integrate and explain why one is the same as the other or why they're both valid ways to you know, put the thing together. And obviously the fretboard, although it looks simple, has an infinite number of ways that you can put this stuff together. Uh, and it's all kind of seems to me like put together almost like a uh, like a fractal picture, you know, so you, you could play with it forever. Right. So in any case, so we'll mess with that. And uh, and so and then we'll we'll look at the intervals going up and back and remembering that these intervals are very important because we compare all minor modes to the main minor scale. And that's how we can kind of define the other minor modes, Dorian and Phrygian, as how they differ from mode number six, the uh, Aeolian. So we'll look at all of the modes. We'll count it up, and uh, so that's it. And then I kind of, and then I kind of noodle around uh, just in the key of A minor. Nothing. I'm just mess thinking about some different fingering exercises I might use, but I was a little tired by I got to then to that point. So. Uh, that that so I didn't do. That's all I did there. Continuing on with what I would call shape number two. This time looking at the minor scale, otherwise known as mode number six, the Aeolian mode. Remembering that I'm assigning absolute mode numbers based on the orientation of the major scale. Therefore, if mode number one, the major scale or Ionian mode, is mode number one, the sixth of that scale is going to be the Aeolian mode. That's why I'm going to assign it an absolute mode number six. Therefore, we're going to be in the minor or Aeolian mode. We're going to have the first through six as they are related to that scale. But when I then name the modes, I'm going to name them based on the absolute number in relation to the C major scale, which hopefully will better orientate us on what those modes mean using that reference point and allowing us some simple math to kind of orientate ourselves as we go around like the circle here. So noting also that the minor scale is the main minor scale. So that means when we look at the modes, we usually break them out into minor modes or uh, major modes, and that's going to be based on the minor third typically. So if the mode has a minor third, it'll basically be a minor mode, the exception being the Locrian mode. It's still kind of like a minor mode, but it also has a flat fifth, so that's the weird one. But basically, if you take that one out, there's seven modes, three of them are minor, and three of them are going to be major. And so the, the the aeolian or minor scale is the main minor mode which we would compare the other minor modes to dorian and phrygian and when we do that the dorian and phrygian will typically have one uh interval that is different than the main minor so it's important to note the main minor it's easy to remember the intervals because they're basically labeled pretty nicely so you got the perfect first the funny one is that it has a major second that's weird because you'd think it would be a minor second, but you just have to remember that the, mi the main minor has a minor second. It's not as minor as it could be. The Phrygian is actually more minor than the main minor because it has that minor second. But in any case, then you've got the uh, minor third of the main minor mode, which of course is what you would expect. That's the interval that basically defines it as a minor scale or minor mode. And then it's got the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth, those things are in those two are inverted from each other those are the same in the major scale and the minor scale the main major and the main minor and then we've got the minor eighth as you would expect instead of a major eighth as you would have in, in a major scale and uh i'm sorry the minor six with just eight notes away and then you've got the minor seven which is 10 notes away 
which is what you would expect in a minor scale as compared to an 11 note away major uh, seventh and a major scale. All right, the other thing we wanna note over here in this shape is when we look at the minor scale, the five note pentatonic scale uh, is applicable to the major and minor modes. So hopefully if we have time, we'll look at, I'm gonna go through like the major scale and try to get that in my mind and then put on top of that the shapes of the minor scale, which basically it's five notes out of seven notes and try to see which notes are removed and how I can visualize a five note pentatonic shape uh, as well as the as well as the other shapes. So in other words, notice the shapes we've been looking at are this box double stop and then the double stop box and then the two note per string flat or hamburger and then box then the box double stop again. That's the top of the box double stop. Uh, but when I go to the five note shapes, we have to basically have a whole new convention of shapes that lays on top of these ones and we can see how they're interrelated but it's almost we almost have to visualize them at least at first like separately and i call them bars and hamburgers and so we'll take a look at those shapes and see how they how you can lay that on top and how they are, are integrated hopefully if we have time so that's my idea here okay so that's good now this shape i'm going to call shape number two so just remembering that the naming conventions of these shapes, like if this is shape number one, pentatonic, it's only shape number one by convention because a lot of people just see that as the number one shape that they learn often first, then this shape would be shape number two. But uh, shape number two, if I look at the full scale, uh, is, is actually starting on the B and not the C. So when I look at it from a pentatonic standpoint, I could say, well, yeah, then it starts on a C. But if I look at the whole major scale, it would start on the B. That's a problem because most people learn this thing from top to bottom, like I did, which means you're basically playing in Locrian, which is not a scale that uh, typically people play in. And, uh, you know, it sounds kind of funny if you're trying to learn the scale and you're playing in Locrian. So we want to basically say we're usually playing from the C. Uh, and that would be a major scale. So if I if I label it from that C and I was to build my shape on it, it would be this shape, which would be my, my major bar chord from the top string uh, standard shape. And that's going to be an E shape, as I can see uh, back here. So that I can I could label this from a caged system, this shape. I might call it then a uh, a an E major shape even though the shape only has three notes in it five notes total being played but repetitive notes uh only three actual different tone wise notes are being played within it so that's going to be that one uh so i could call it an e shape this whole shape even though it has seven notes in it i could call that now i could also just call it i would also think of this as my just my major shape because when I'm thinking about cutting the fretboard into four to five note chunks so I can fit my fingers on them, like is typically done, then then I would think of this as the shape I would go to to play, you know, a major scale, right? And so that's I would think of that as just like my major shape, but it starts on the second string. So I might also try to get more specific and call it like the note number two major shape. So now I'm trying to say this is the major shape that's going to be starting on the second note of the shape. Uh, so, And I'm going to try to get more specific on that. And if I do that, I could name each shape by, the, by modes. So now I'm also going to start to say, well, what if I name this shape in relation to the, to, to the mode number six, the A down here is mode number six. So I could start to say, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the seventh note if I start from the top. So I could call it the seventh note Aeolian or seventh note mode number six Aeolian uh, shape, which no one actually says, right? Because they're because that's going to, because now you have to know the modes and whatnot to do that, to name it something like that. But I think that naming convention might help me to label these, each of these shapes in relation to the modes. So I'm kind of playing with that naming convention. Now, the next thing I could say is like, okay, well, if I was on, 
if I was on uh, the C here, and I know this is my C or my major shape, and I wanted to get to the minor, then how can I how could I get how do I know where the minor is? Because I, I know my shape from top to bottom, and I know it's a major shape. So I can say, okay, well, if if this I know the aeolian is the sixth, which is why this numbering system is useful. The aeolian is the sixth of the related major scale. So if that's the major, then I can just go up to the six. So if that's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's the A and there's the six. So I can do it that way. I can also say, well, it's a sixth away and a sixth away for a major scale related to the major scale. The sixth of the major scale is a major sixth away. And therefore that would be a nine note away major six. So I could count it up. I could see that shape as a nine note away major six interval or I could count it up one or five, 10, because there's five notes between each string, nine. So there's nine note away. So that would be, okay, there's where I would start to get to my aeolian uh, within this shape. So a couple ways we can see it that way. All right, so then let's go here and let's just look at our shape. So we have our A down here. So if I started on that bit, then I'm starting. Oh, I, the other way I can see this is I can say before I do that, I can say, where does the aeolian hang out? And here's my story that I'm going to keep repeating my story because it helps me to visualize. I'm going to say the aeolian, the minor mode doesn't hang out with in the major's penthouse. So this box that we see repeated over here, the people that hang out, the, the modes that hang out in the box are always the same. They're always in that box. And so, and that's, I'm going to call it C's box or the major scale box, which is in the upper right looking towards the ocean. Now we also have, that's the major mode. Now the Phrygian mode is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Lydian mode, which is all is another major mode is going to be uh, in that box as well, looking up towards the ocean in that house. I'm imagining it is a, as a house. And then you've got the minor modes that don't have the preferred place in the house. They're in the back of the house looking towards the utility plant over here. And so they don't have as good a view. And you've got the Phrygian down here, the rock and roll metal Phrygian I'm imagining that's in the basement cranking up the amp and playing with that with that minor second that's piss that just annoys Lydian all the time. And then you've got and then you've got up here the Locrian, which I imagine is in the attic. And we don't usually start on Locrian all the time. All right. And then, of course, we've got the minor, the minor over here. It doesn't hang out in the house. It actually floats around a bit. So it's in the double stop. So it's at the top of the double stop square. But the next one up here is actually in what I call the two note per string meat of the hamburger. It's in its own flat. And it doesn't hang, it's not hanging with a major over here. It's hanging with the Dorian. So the Dorian's a minor mode. It's also not in the house. And then it also hangs out with the Mixolydian, which uh, is a major mode, but it has that flat seven, which is like what, so that it has that in common with the minor modes. So that's why it hangs out. It hangs out with the minors. All right, that's the story. Okay, so then we can say, let's go ahead and map this out. So we're going to say, duh, 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 duh. so this is going to be, so it starts here, boom, 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 at the top of the double stop square, and then it goes to the bottom of the double stop square, duh, duh, duh. and then it goes to the two note per string hamburger, going up the invisible curve. There's a fault line there, earthquake happened, shifting it up to the right, so I got to step up the invisible curb to the right, boom, boom. And there we end it off and there's our octave. Noting the octave is, is gonna be one string up than what it normally is. Normally the octave would be back here, but because of the fault line right there, shifted up. And so you gotta reach a bit higher to get the octave. Let's take a look at our intervals then. Uh, well, let's take a look at like holes and half steps. Holes and half steps for the main, for the main minor. This is my main minor. So we're gonna go from the one, uh, let's give another, I need another one of these. Copy, paste, and the main minor, main minor. 
All right. So we're going to go from the one to the two uh, is a whole step. And then if I go from the two to the three is a half step. Now we're in this box now. That's where the half steps lives. So two to three half step. And then from three to four is a whole step. Pinky to pointer is a whole step, you'll recall, unless you're on where the fault line is. And then four to five uh, is a whole step. Notice there's only one note in between before we get back to this box, which is where the other half step lives. Five to six, that's where the half step is. And then six to seven, you've got a whole step, which is not pinky to pointer this time because that's where the fault line is. So now we're going uh, pinky to uh, pinky to middle finger, and then and then uh, we've got back home seven to eight or one, which is a whole step. So you'll note that the minor uh, the minor modes don't have that leading tone like the major scale going from here half step leading home, which doesn't give you that sense of pull so much on the minor, and that's the one we can play with. Uh, in order to feel that pull. So we can just kind of add it generically. So like if I'm playing up here in my minor over here and I want to get back to that A and I want to have a sense of pull, I could just add that sounds out of whack, but then it relieves to there. So that's something to just kind of play with. If you're noodling around in any of the minors and you're like, oh, I want to like end it off. You could just hit that one right before it. And then, of course, you can you can play anything that's in the chord, and we can play with that, too. Like, I can play this as, like, an E minor, but I can switch it to a, a major, and just which is basically just adding that leading note back to, back to the A minor. And that's over here to E minor. So you'll hear that, that kind of thing a lot of times in a minor in a minor to give you that pull all right just just to get a little off topic there i don't know where uh so now let's say i go with like uh let's say now that i do the intervals so now i'm going to do the intervals so we're going to go from uh one to two so if i'm here to here one to two minor it's this is the funny one because you would think it would be a one note away minor second but it's a two note away major second so that's the funny one on the minor and the inverse of that would be 12 minus 2 which would be a 10 note away and that would be a minor 7 so if i go from this a from a to b that's a two note away major second if i went from b to a that's going to be a, a 10 note away minor 7 going from the two, oh, by the way, also the second of the uh, Aeolian. Notice if I can say Aeolian is absolute mode number six because it's the sixth mode from, uh, it's the sixth mode when I keep, when I say mode number one is Ionian or the major scale. That means if I started on Ionian as mode number one and I went five steps up from there, that would get me to the sixth mode. Therefore, the formula is going to be whatever I'm on. This is the sixth mode minus one to get to the number of steps to get there from the Ionian, which would be five, plus whatever I'm on right now within this mode, which is two. That would be five plus two, which would be seven. And that gives me absolute mode number seven, which is the Locrian mode, the crazy one. You can see it always lives in the house, in the box, but it's in, up in the attic, up in the attic on the top of the box. All right, let's go to the third. Let's go to the third. The third, the defining characteristic of the modes is the third. And of course, this being a minor mode, the main minor, three note away, minor third. If I say 12, the inverse is 12 minus three. So that would be an, uh, 12 minus three is a nine note away, major uh, sixth. And note that the minor's inverse is a major. So if I went from A to C, that's like we normally would, three note away minor third from C to A, therefore, is a nine note away 
uh, major six. How can I prove that if I take that C and I count it up like from here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I visualize it as a circle, it's going to be, it has to add up to 12, right? Going either way on the circle from a distance wise, you can walk one way around the circle or the other way around the circle. You're just doing laps. Either way you go, you're just doing laps. That's all we're doing, people. We're just doing laps. I don't care which way you go. You're just, we're just going in circles. And that's cool. I like circles. I can go in circles all day long and I love it. Here we, let's do the next one. This is the fourth of uh, the minor and it's gonna be the fourth of a minor is a five note away perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because the distance between two strings is five notes and that means that 12 minus five is going to be a seven note away and that would be a perfect fifth. So whenever I see this shape stacked on each other, unless it's in the fault line area where the earthquake happened, it's gonna be a, uh, a four note away perfect fourth. But if I went the other way, from D to A, five note away perfect fifth, the perfects are inverts of each other. You can't have one perfect going one way and the other one not being perfect. That would be an imperfect structure uh, and we have, if you, so, and you can't have that, that wouldn't make any sense. So and then we're going to go to the next one and that's going to be the fifth. So the fifth of the minor mode, the Aeolian absolute mode number six is a seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because I can say this is going to five, six, seven, 12 minus seven is five. That would be a five note away perfect fourth the other way, the inverse. So if I see that shape, that's a power chord which is a five note away, a seven note away, perfect fifth. It's got the, the one, the five, it's missing the third. So it's kind of ambiguous. You don't know if it's gonna be a major or minor. It keeps you guessing uh, until, you, until you add, until you keep going. So it kind of, uh, so, and it doesn't have that, the main flavor of the chord, which is usually the minor uh, or that third, which is either major or minor. Now, if I went the other way from the top, bottom to the top, that would be, a uh, four note away perfect fourth because they're inverted. All right, and then if I go to the next one, so now we're on uh, the next one, which is, oh, wait a second, I should be doing my interval, my, this fifth is also, uh, uh, it, if I look at the Aeolian, which is absolute mode number six, six minus one is five, plus five is 10 and there's only seven modes so 10 minus 7 is 3 that gives us absolute mode number 3 which is the phrygian mode a minor mode it's hanging out in the house over here but it's not looking up towards the ocean the miners are stuck in the back of the house which is why the main miner was like whatever dude i'm out of here i ain't putting up with this looking at the utility co if i'm going to look at the utility company i'll play i'll do it in my own place and it left but the phrygian's still here uh, here and the, here and it, it just it doesn't care it's like whatever and then it as long as it can bla blast its amp it almost likes it because it pisses off uh, the Lydian which is you know at least gives you some purpose in life so let's go to the next one uh, we're gonna say now we're on the six so the six is gonna be of the minor scale is an eight note away minor six so now we have an eight note away minor six how do i know that because if i count down that'd be five six seven eight eight note away minor six inverse 12 minus six uh would be four uh wait a sec no 12 12 wait a sec eight note away it's an eight note away <laughs> 12 minus eight uh is four which would be a major third so if i see that shape i'm like oh that's a shapes a little more unusual a little more exotic that's gonna be it's like a parrot or something because it's exotic that's gonna be it's not that exotic i've seen parrots before have you never what have you never seen a parrot okay it's still kind of exotic i don't play it all the time but it's an eight that would be an eight note away minor six but if i go from the f to the a that would be a, a, a four note away major third. Okay, let's, and then I also know that the sixth of Aeolian 
is going to be mode number six aeolian minus one is five plus six would be 11 there's only seven modes so that would be meaning that this is going to be mode number four which is the lydian mode which we can see also because it's hanging in the house and it's up at the front of the house it's not in the penthouse but it's still in the front looking towards the ocean it's still got like that beach view and can go out this the the phrygian has to, it it not only doesn't have a beach view but it has to go all the way around the block because it doesn't have the 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 um it doesn't have a straight path to the beach because the the people up front they make them they cut they cut off the beach axis and so he has to go all the way like this big path even though he's in the same house which is doesn't seem very fair but whatever dude i don't care and we're gonna go to the next one so this is gonna be uh uh this is going to be the mixolydian mixolydian uh is going to be uh the, the seventh the seventh of the minor as you would expect is a 10 note away minor seven now what you would probably expect is for it to be back here but no because there was an earthquake and like it made this fault line right here and it shifted up this whole bit this whole thing like got shifted up and so now it looks like it should be back here to do like a minor seven, but it's totally not. It's way it's been moved. So that's gonna be, so if I see that shape, I'm like, oh yeah, that's still a 10 note away, uh, 10 note away minor seven. If I count that up, I can say that's gonna be 10 here and then, or five here and then 10 shifting up, right? Because they have to shift. Okay, so that's that. Uh, I also know that the seventh of mode number six, Aeolian, is six minus one, which is five. Five plus seven, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 is 12. And then there's only seven modes. So 12 minus seven, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 is five, <laughs> which gives me the mixolydian. I'm having trouble doing this in my head. I'm addicted to Excel. And that gives me the mixolydian mode, which is a major mode, given the fact that it has a major letter here, but it doesn't hang out in the house, even though it's a major mode, because it was like, I'm out of here just like I'm hanging with my friend, the main minor, because I have this like minor seventh in common. And so it's in the flat at this point, uh, the meat of the hamburger. Okay, and then we're gonna go back to the octave. That's a 12 note away octave, which again is one string up. You would think it would be back here, like normally the shape would be, but it's up here because of the fault line. So it goes five and then 10 up here, 11, 12. So there it is. All right, so then we're gonna go back the other way, but first let me, I'm gonna practice my jokes. These are raw jokes that I'm gonna, might as well practice them here. So, so have you ever heard, it's a no holds bar, no holds bar fight, it's, which is a weird saying, no holds bar, because it, it seems to mean like that anything goes and the confrontation it's no holds bar it, yet 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 it says that you it also seems to say that you can't hold a bar but like holding a bar is generally advantageous and possibly cheating you know in some kind of like fight or you know confrontation or something so the so which is it with this no holds bar thing is it like anything goes or, or does it mean you, you're not allowed to hold a bar because it says no hold, no holds bar. So you got, you got to be careful with definitions these days. I'm telling you that the dang, these dang rules these days everywhere, the dang rules seem like they're made by sneaky deconstruction, deconstructionist nutcases. I'm telling you, they don't make no sense. They keep changing the definitions. The rules don't even matter anymore. I think that's the point. They changed the definitions. Now you can't even, you don't even know if you can hold a bar or not. I don't even, okay. I needs work. It needs work. Anyways, let's go back the other way. So we're going to go back this way now. So if I start on uh, this G and I go backwards. So now we're starting on the two note per string hamburger. 
and we go back to here to do it and then we're going to go and then we we're going the invi because there's an invisible curve here we have to step to the down the invisible curve which is to the left to get to the next shape which is going to be uh da and so that's going to be the bottom of what i call the double stop square and then we go to the top of what i call the double stop square do 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 so let's go ahead and count that out. I'm going to start with eight here, which is equivalent to one, but it's easier to start at eight. So there's going to be my A on eight. So that's going to be eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Uh, let's do the intervals in reverse. Throwing this thing in reverse. So if I started on one or eight and went behind it backwards, we would be going back to the seventh. And I know that the seventh for the absolute mode number six Aeolian mode is going to be a minor mode, therefore a 10 note away minor seven. How can I prove that? I could see the distance between these two notes is two. And so if I went from G to A, it would be a two note away, which would be a major uh, second and 12 minus 2 is 10 giving me the 10 note away minor 7 so if I went the normal way when I see this shape if I went from here to here like I normally would count it that'd be a 2 note away major second but if I went from A to G therefore the inverse 10 note away minor 7 the majors and the minors being uh, the inverts of each other oftentimes so then I'm going to go back up and say well what if we go back to the 6th so then I go back to the sixth, which is going to be here, and say, what is that? Well, the sixth of a minor scale is, an, is a minor sixth, and that's going to be an eight note away as opposed to a nine note away minor six. When I see the stacking on top of it, each other, I think of that as the perfects, perfect fourth or perfect fifth, depending on the direction, but it's not here because of the earthquake w resulting in the fault line, which once again shifted everything up. Uh, so therefore, if I went from the F to the A, uh, that would be, if I go this way, it would be uh, 5, 4. So it would be a 4 note away uh, major third. And 12 minus 4 is uh, 8, which would be the 8 note away minor 6. So if I see that shape, normally I would go from top to the bottom and say, okay, because of the earthquake, that looks like it's a perfect fourth, but it's actually a major third and if I go the other way from A to F therefore that's going to be an eight note away minor six all right so then I'm going to go back one and go to the fifth go to the fifth bringing it back bringing it back to the fifth so now we have uh, the, the fifth of the minor scale is a seven note away perfect fifth how can I prove that because if I go from the E to the A, that's five notes away. Just here to here is five notes because of the kink in the tuning, because of the fault line. And that's going to be then 12 minus five is seven, seven note away, perfect fifth. So if I see this normally, I'd see that shape and say, oh, that shape, uh, it looks like it's a flat fifth. But no, because of the fault line, it's a f perfect fifth. And therefore, the inverse going from A to E must be the other perfect, which is a five note away uh, uh, per I'm sorry, wait a sec. Yeah, five note away, perfect. If I, <laughs> I messed up. If I go from E to A, that's gonna be a five note away, perfect fourth. And then if I go from inverse, A to E, seven note away, perfect fifth. All right, I'm getting turned, I'm getting a little mixed up here, a little tired. That's okay, that's why you do the practice sessions. I'm trying to get this in my head here. So then we're going to go back to uh, the fifth. So now I'm on the fifth. No, now I'm on the <laughs> now I'm on the fourth. It's a five note away, perfect fourth. Okay. So so I know it's the fourth. The fourth of the minor is a five note away, perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because if I went from the D, it would be five. No, it would be five to here, six seven. So D to A would be a seven note away, perfect fifth. That makes sense because. Uh, that shape is a perfect fifth considering the fault line, which you would think would be back here, but it's up here because of the fault line. And 12 minus, 
uh, seven is a five note away perfect fourth. So going this way from D, from the D, seven note away perfect fifth. But if I went from the A back to the D, five note away perfect fourth. Makes perfect sense. All right, so now we're gonna go to the third. The third is here, uh, here. All right, and then that's gonna be the third of the minor is the defining interval, which of course is a three note away minor third. How do I know that? Well, if I went from the E instead of the A, it would be five, uh, it would be from this E, it would be five notes away. So, so I went to the wrong note because I should have been going up to this C. So sorry, so, so I'm still a little distracted here. So now I'm up to the C, and that makes more sense. Because if I was up here, then it would be five, 10, and then nine, and that would be a nine note away uh, major six, and 12 minus nine would be the four note, would be 12 minus nine, uh, would be a three note away minor third, yes. Okay, <laughs> so if I see this shape, I'm gonna be thinking, well, that, that looks like it would be a minor seven, but no, uh, if I went from the C to the A, that's gonna be five, that's gonna be five, 10, nine, it's a nine note away major six because of the fault line. And if I, so if I went this way, it's gonna be a nine note away major six. And if I went from the A to the C, three note away minor third, okay. Okay, you're confusing people now. Get your head in the game. Get your get your head in the game. I, okay. I know what I'm doing here. Wait a second. You're embarrassing yourself for crying out loud. All right, I I see what's happening. I'm my head. I'm back in the game. We're gonna say let's go to the second. So now we're gonna say all right. The second of the Aeolian or major scale is a two note away major second. Uh, how do I know that? Well, if I count from the B, it would be five, 10. That would be a 10 note away minor seven. And 12 minus 10 is a two, which would be a two note away major second. So if I look at that shape, I'm usually going from the B to the A, which would be a 10 note away uh, minor seven. But if I go from the A to the B, two note away major second, all right? And then we're back home to the octave. Okay, let's try to do this with, let's just take a look at what if I did the five note pentatonic scale here. Now the five note pentatonic scale, uh, what I would use to uh, describe it is gonna be the, <clears throat> um, the bar and the hamburger. So the bar and the hamburger. We have to use different shapes. I know it's confusing, but this is, I have done deep analysis and this is just the best way to do it. It's the only way to do it here. So it is what it is, okay? Stop complaining about it. This is, I'm showing you the best that, that there is. Deep research has been done on my part here. Okay. And then, uh, and then this is, oh, wait a second. I'm just trying to get this all set up here so that we can look at it. And then this one was up here. Okay. So what does this all mean? Well, I will tell you what it means. This is the bar. Uh, and that means that we only play the outer bits of these shapes because we're eliminating the middle bit. We're scooping out the middle and throwing it away like throwing out pumpkin seeds when making a jack-o'-lantern or something because we, we, we only want the outer sides. And then, and so, and then, so that's going to be the bar. And then this is the hamburger. Now the hamburger looks funny because it's been shifted up because of the earthquake. So the top bun of the hamburger has been, is obviously shifted to the left and the meat and the right bun of the hamburger are shifted to the right because again, earthquake, 
we know about we know the story of the earthquake so we have to deal with that so but this would be like a hamburger like a computer science hamburger where they have those three things and so with this shape we're only playing the outer bits of these shapes so so uh, by the way then the hamburger repeats up here should just be these two and then the, this hamburger bit repeats up top so that's the bottom bun of the hamburger okay so if I look at it in terms of these shapes, where are my roots in a minor scale? And notice the shapes, I'm usually thinking of them in terms of only major and minor, not every other mode, because every other mode has a, has a crucial note that won't be in the pentatonic. So these fit quite well in the major and the minor is the general idea. So, so where are my notes? I have my note here which is at the bottom of the barbell. And I see it as a barbell because here's the barbell, here's the barbell, the middle part has been scooped out. So it's just the bar, right? This is like, nothing's really there. It's just the bar. And then here's the end of the barbells. So it starts at the bottom left of the barbell. And then it ends at the right side of the middle meat of the hamburger, right? So that's where the A lives. Now, how can I tie that in to my major shapes. The major shapes we broke out into the, into the house or box and the double stop. So you can see that the bar straddles the bottom of the box double stop and then the top of the double stop box. So, so that means, you know, our A here was at the top of the double stop part of the double stop box and it's gonna be at the right hand side of the same the one shape that is the same between the two seven note and five shape five the pentatonic and the seven note and that's going to be the hamburger that's why i say it's on the right side of the meat of the hamburger okay let's see if i we can make sense of this so if i play this out we're, we're going to say that we start on the, the 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 bottom of the bar and then we bottom left of the bar and then we, of course, go to the uh, right of the bar. Then we go to the top of the hamburger, a top bun of the hamburger. And then we have to shift up the invisible curb. So now we're up here uh, in the meat of the hamburger. And then we go to the back home uh, to the right side of the meat of the hamburger, which is where the minor scale root positions live. If I count that out, we also have kind of an issue with the counting because there's only five notes, so I could just count it from one to six, six being the octave, that's the easy way to do it, right? So I'd say one, uh, two, so we'd say, wait, one, two, three, four, five, five, well, hold on a sec, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm shifting my fingers up, so you kind of play with your, whatever your finger, but that makes sense to do it that way, and it's easy to count up that way, but, uh, the numbering system isn't going to fit in our seven note uh, pentatonic and therefore our interval structure is not going to be as easy. So we can try to list the five notes in our pentatonic scale, numbering them based on our seven note structure, which is a little bit wonky to do to count up, but makes it easier for them to kind of think about our intervals and whatnot. So we could say, okay, we're going to be going from uh, the one, and I've color coded them now. So we're going to skip the two, go into the three, and then we're going to go to the four, to the five, and then we're skipping the six, going to the seven, and then to the eight. So we could practice basically trying to play that with this numbering system. So we could say this is going to be then duh, 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 the, the uh, one, three, four, five, and then seven whoops seven eight one three four five seven eight one three four five seven eight and it would be useful to do that you know in reverse as well and that's a little wonky to do it's a lot easier to just say one through six but again it's useful to to note which intervals you're skipping uh, and then you can use again the same kind of uh, structure here which are all related to basically the root uh, the root note on a seven note, you know, <laughs> structure. So also just note that the rules on the pentatonic is that we don't have any notes next to each other. So that gives us, that removes some of the tension because we don't have those uh, half steps. 
And that means that to remove like this half step here, how did we do that? We, instead of having a whole step interval or a half step interval, we're going from here to here, we have a three step interval. So that means the intervals are either gonna be uh, a, 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 a whole step interval, two notes, or a three step interval uh, at those points where, re where we removed the half step in the seven note uh, major scale. So that's the general idea, how the pentatonic kind of fits in there. So like I say, it's useful to kind of think of these two shapes, these two different concepts of shapes, and then try to visualize, this is what I'm doing at least, try to visualize how they fit on top of each other. So when I'm thinking pentatonic, I'm thinking bar, I'm thinking the full shape, right? This is still shape number two, where I'm lo looking at the pentatonic, but if I start playing the shape from top to bottom, <laughs> Right, then what happens is I, I only know the shape if I play it from top to bottom, and I would like to be able to visualize the shapes down here as I'm playing down here. And to do that, you chunk it down into smaller shapes, which if you're looking at the seven note shapes, fits into these boxes and double stops. But if you're looking at the pentatonic, I think it's easier to think about them as these bars and then the hamburger, the two the two main shapes, and you can see when these hamburgers are stacked on each other, uh, it could be an easier way to kind of visualize it. All right, so that's going to be the that's what I'm thinking on that at the moment. Let us now go to the next one. Another thing that I I just like to try to point out to myself is that this A right here, I'm in what I call shape number two. Uh, but, uh, you, but if I start on this A, I can also visualize, well, what if that A was on the top string? If it was on the top string over here, then what would I, what would I, uh, be playing if that A was on, uh, the top string? If I'm going forward to this way, so there's... Well, I can't get this to fit on there. All right, there it is. Okay. And that would, of course, be what I would call position number one, right? So I could say, I could see this A here. If I lean forward, I'm going to basically be playing the same position as though it was on the top string, except that I have to adjust for the, the kink in the tuning because of the fault line. So up here, it would be... <laughs> If I do that same thing, you can see the same shape here. Here's the double stop box. And then you've got the two note per string meat of the hamburger. And so you have the double stop box from here. And of course there's the octave. So now I'm just playing that same shape from here to here. And then I've got. But then the, the, the meat of the hamburger is shifted up. That's where I have to account for that stepping up the invisible curve. So that's another way that I think it's useful to kind of connect these things out and visualize them. Uh, okay. So now let's try to go back the other way. So now I'm going to go back. Uh, oh, no, we, we went back the other way. Let's go up this time from here around the horn back to here. So if I did that, I'd be starting at the two note per string meat of the hamburger and then I'm going to the top of what I call the the house or square double stop you can see that up here because this is the top bit of it so boom 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 that repeats up top so if I go around the horn this is still the house double stop in essence uh, am I I'm not even in am I in the right place what is going on here what is happening I'm totally not in the right place let's do that again Getting a little tired here, a little tired. So we got the two note per string meat of the hamburger. Then we're going to the top of the house double stop. Then once again, the top of the house double stop. And then the bottom of the house double stop back ending at the top here. Duh. So if I play that out, starting at this A and going around the top, it'd be one, Two, three, four, and that repeats. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's try another joke before I keep going here. It'll give me some energy. Uh, apparently, apparently, there's a late night movie playing called The Thing, which at one time inspired inspired the classic song which you might be aware of which is like it goes something like this it's like so i don't want to close my eyes i don't want to fall asleep because i'd miss it babe and i don't want to miss the thing and you know and i think people young people today don't really understand that song because like it used to be that you'd you'd like the late night horror movie would be on like at at night because they couldn't play it during the day because they were like people that didn't want stuff on the tv so they restricted it and you can only play it like in the middle of the night so if you wanted to watch the horror movie you had to stay up uh late and these days you can just stream it you know whenever you want so i think people lose the emphasis of the song, but one of the classic horror movies, obviously, is The Thing, you know? And so, you know, obviously, many people had the pain and agony of having to get up to work the next day, but, you know, you want to watch The Thing, and you couldn't record it, and you couldn't, you couldn't uh, stream it or anything, and so, and that, that hurt, that pain led to one of the one of the most classic songs. I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep because I'd miss it, babe. And I don't want to miss the thing. So you could feel, you could just feel the pain of that, right? And people just don't, people just these days, they don't understand. Anyways, let's go uh, to the next one. So now we're going, let's go to the first to the second here once again. So we're going to go to the first to the second. So that's going to be a uh, the second of the Aeolian scale, mode number six, minor scale, the main minor, is a two note away major second. I know that because if I go from here to here, there's no kink in the tuning between these two. The fault line is between these two, so we're back to normal. It's just five, four, three, two. And we know that then the uh, inverse 12 minus 2 is 10, which would be a 10 note away uh, minor 7. So if I see the shape like normal, it's pinky to pointer. That would be a 2 note away major second. But if I go inverse B to A, 10 note away uh, minor 7. All right, let's go to the next one. Oh, I also, let's do this again. The second of the mode number six, Aeolian main minor is six minus one, which is two. I mean, sorry, six minus one, which is five. Five plus two is seven. That gives me absolute mode number seven, otherwise known as Locrian, which is right behind the penthouse. It's up in the attic, though. That's where the Locrian lies. All right, let's do the next one. And we're going to say do, 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 do. Uh, so now we know that the third of the Aeolian mode, the defining interval of a minor mode is, of course, a three note away minor third. I can count that up by just saying there's five, four, three, inverse, 12 minus three, nine note away, major six. Therefore, whenever I see that shape, just like normal, that's a three note away minor third as opposed to the four note away major third, which would be up here. Three note away minor third. And if I went from the D back this way would be a nine note away major six if i went from the c what did i say d when if c to a you know what i meant you know what i meant all right we're gonna now we're gonna go to the d i was getting ahead of myself i hate waiting for myself i'm so slow you gotta hold on wait for yourself i don't like i need to get ahead of myself because myself is so slow i hate walking at that pace you have to wait for yourself. All right. So uh, we're going to say then this is going to be the fourth of the Aeolian or minor mode. 
uh, which is a five note away perfect fourth. How do I know this? Because the distance between those strings is just five, and the inverse is 12 minus five, which is a seven note away perfect fifth. Perfects are inverts of each other. So if I see that shape as normal stacked on top of each other, that's going to be top to bottom. That'll be a five note away perfect fourth. But if I go from the bottom to the top, seven note away perfect fifth. Let's repeat this process up top, which is a little bit more difficult going back to the second because I want to compare it now, not to this A, but to this A, which means we're expanding across an octave, across the divide. So we're going from here to here. So I really want to measure from this A up top, which is kind of reversed to what we would normally see that shape as. And this becomes important if you're noodling around, of course, <clears throat> and you're trying to play multiple strings and trying to build and say, okay, what am I playing here? Look at the intervals and figure them out on, a, on these longer spans when you're stretching around a bit. So in any case, if I went from the B like we normally would, counting from top to bottom, it would be 5, 10, 15, up the fault line to 20, 21, 22. There's only 12 uh, notes. So 22 minus 12 is, uh, is like, is like uh, 22 minus 12. What, what, what is that? That is 10. And by the way, I, I can also do that by counting up to this one, right? Because then I would say this would be 5, 10 right here. But I'm going to try to count up to this one. So we get so then I subtract the 12, and I would get to the 10. 12 minus uh, 10 is 2, and that's a 2 note away minor second. So if I see that shape, I want to start to memorize top to bottom would be a 2 note away major second, even though it's spanning an octave. And that means the inverse, if I went from the bottom to the top, would, would be a 10 note away uh, minor 7. All right, hopefully I got that correct. Let's go to the next one. I think I did. I think I did. So if I go to the next one, I can go, all right, this is going to be the third of the minor scale, which of course is a 3 note away minor third. How can I prove that? Well, I could compare it to this one, right, which would be 5, 10, 9, 12 minus 9 is 3, but I'm going to compare it to this one. 5, 10, 15, 20, 21, 21 uh, minus 12 is going to be 9, and so that distance is a 9 note away uh, major 6, and the inverse would be 12 minus 9, which would be a 3 note away minor 3rd. So if I see it, so I just want to start to see that shape and say, okay, if I played that... That would, from C to A, that would be a nine note away major six. And therefore, if I inverted it, that would be a three note away minor third. All right, then I'm going to go to the next one and say, okay, now I'm going to go to this one. So this is going to be the fourth. And we know the fourth of a minor scale is a five note away perfect fourth. I could compare it to this A by saying if I measure from the D, five, ten, nine, eight, seven, that would be a, a seven note away perfect uh, fifth, and 12 minus 7 would be a 5 note away perfect fourth, but if I compare it to this one, it would be 5, 10, 15, and then out here to 20 because of the fault line, 20, 19, 19 minus 12 because there's only 12 notes, it's basically 9 minus 2, uh, which is 7, so that means that this shape, if I measured from the D, I want to start to see that as a 7 note away perfect fifth, which you could see if you did a bar chord there, and if I then say that means the inverse therefore would be a five would be the per the, the perfects are inverted from each other so it'd be a five note away perfect fourth going from the a back all right then let's go to the fifth of the minor scale the fifth of the minor scale but boom but ba bam but ba bing it's going to be a uh a seven note away perfect uh fifth so how do i know that well i could compare it to this a and I know that this distance between these two is five note away perfect fourth, inverse seven note away perfect fifth. But if I compare it to this one, it would be five, 10, 15, 16, 17. 17 minus 12 is uh, 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 it's basically seven minus two, seven, six, five, five note away perfect fourth. So if I went from, if I look at that shape, then I want to start to see that as a five note away perfect fourth and therefore the inverse from a back to e seven note away perfect fifth all right and then let's go to the sixth 
I'm going to say sixth, and we're going to go do, 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 and then that's here. So the sixth of a minor scale is an eight note away minor sixth. I can count that to this A by saying five. Uh, this would be five, four, which would be a four note away minor third from the F to the A. Twelve minus four is eight, eight note away minor six. If I compare it to this A though, five, 10, 15, up the fault line, 16, 16 minus 12, <coughs> six minus two in essence <coughs> is four. And so if I see that shape, I'm gonna say, oh, that's a four note away major third, but the inverse therefore is gonna be an eight note away minor six. I'm losing my voice. Don't go voice, I need you. You're all I got, man. I d don't go. All right, and then the next one's gonna be the seventh is a 10 note away minor seventh. And how do I know that? Because if I compared to this A, it would be five, four, three, two. So if I, if, uh, if I, that'd be two and then 12 minus two would be 10, 10 note away minor seven. If I compare it down here, it'd be five, 10, 15, 14, 14 minus 12 notes is basically four minus two, which is two, which is a two note away major second. So if I look at that shape, I'm gonna think of it as a, it's a two note away major second, but if I invert it, going from the bottom to the top, that's a 10 note away minor seven. All right, that's gonna be the general idea here. Uh, so if I just come in A minor. So usually what I mess around in A minor is the, uh, the, the flats. So I, so I just play the normal scale. And then I add like that, that flat five. That's a passing tone. That's like the bluesy thing to do for the minors. Which I can do up here. that leading tone going back to eight. Here's an A, the leading tone. And I think kind of leading tone is interesting because you could do it different ways. I've been playing with this, like if I was in the key of A. A minor. I could play an E and then add that leading tone to the E major. that pull kind of like a major but I've been playing with this one I could do it this way too because really if I'm trying to I'm trying to like get something that's gonna sound a little out but then lead back and I was just thinking well like if I look at this shape and I and I just play something that's gonna have half steps that'll lead into it I could play like all this middle bit right here which is totally not in the key at all but it has a half step going, going from here to here, here to here, or here to here, right? It's got a half step one way or the other on each string. So if I was in like the key of A, then I played that. Sounds totally wonky. But then it kind of all those resolve in a, in some kind of half step, right? So, and I was playing this one like I could play this shape if I'm going to this minor. Then I could play like this shape, which has these two strings again are out of the key, and this would be like this would be like a minor uh, uh, G sharp. So that's another leading one. That I'm just trying to find ways I can play with that leading tone. That's not it. Right.
this with my finger in here. So I'm trying to finger this shape. See if I can play with that for a while. Where am I? I'm up here. And I'm trying to play the open A to here, and then to here, and then to here. Just to get F, just to try to work on my fingering. Mm -hmm. 